Hi. So I'm the director of drum set studies, and I do get to play lots of different kinds of music, uh, most of the time jazz. Uh, but living here in Hollywood, I also enjoy the opportunity to work in film on occasion. Um, maybe you're familiar with the Austin Powers movies? I'm the drummer on all three of the Austin Powers film scores. Thank you. Would you like to hear the two primary beats that are used throughout the Austin Powers movies? I was hoping you'd say so. Now, uh, this is not as challenging as skydiving, but almost as frightening. Thank you very much. Okay, now, those are two very simple beats, and they're both the same tempo, but they have a recognizably different feel. And what determines the feel in any piece of music, those magical spaces between the notes. We have a primary pulse, and it could be do do da 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 Those little do do are the subdivisions. So those are straight A's. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. Or the swing, da do da de, which is the more rolling triplet kind of feel. These are the kind of things that drummers dream about and think about, and it's what we teach here at USC and what I would teach to any drummer. But first, a little history. The first drums are made from wood and skin. And drums are made of wooden skin for many, many years. About 100 years ago, jazz was born in New Orleans, and the modern drum set was born. The drum set, a combination of drums played by one musician. The drums become more and more sophisticated. Here's a lovely photo of the drum set of Baby Dodds, a very important figure in jazz. Uh, Here's a lovely photo of John Bonham's drum set. Uh, this was the vision of drumming's future in the 1980s. That's Tim Root playing on a Simmons drum set. So this brings up the question, what role does innovation play in the development of music and its influence on culture, education, and politics? Wow. All right. Now, what do you think of when you think of Woodstock? You usually get lots of woos and free love and Jimi Hendrix, <laughs> which are all kind of the same thing. <laughs> uh, by the way, the plastic drum head, now we've moved away from animal skin, the plastic drum head was born in the 1950s, just before I started playing the drums. <laughs> Can I hear a woo? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Now, what does this have to do with Woodstock, or for that matter, the Beatles? Oh, yeah. Rain and mud. Now, if drums were still made of just wood and played with skin for the hides, or hides for the drum skin, um, you wouldn't have had very much music, at least on day two of the event. Um, where I'm going with this is that it was the innovation of the plastic drum head and the bass amplifier that made loud music possible, which made rock possible, which made a message of an entire generation. It was possible for it to be heard across this nation and around the world. So, you know, if the medium is indeed the message, then I guess we are on to something. Uh, just for fun, speaking of the Beatles, did anyone ever see this logo? before they were on the Ed Sullivan show. Okay. 
Now at USC, we teach drumming to drummers. That's Indugu Chancellor, Aron Serfati, and myself, for the three professors here. We also teach drumming to non-drummers. And by the time one semester has gone by, they become drummers. And we can do this by using electronic drum sets, the same kits that you heard at the very beginning of the TEDx uh, presentation today. And by means of these headsets, the instructor can communicate uh, simultaneously with eight students or discreetly and individually uh, one or two students at a time. So we can foster individual instruction and yet multiply the effects. Um, we started off uh, with, with one or two sections. Uh, that was, I guess, 16 students last year. Uh, we're now teaching 64 students a semester. We're going to expand the program pretty much 24-7. I guess the thrust of this, my dream of innovation, is that this is just what the world needs, more drummers. <laughs> so our vision of drumming's tomorrow. Now, USC is the first school to require drum set proficiency of all instrumentalists and vocalists as part of a degree program. Uh, if any of you went to music school, you had to pass piano proficiency. Well, we do drum proficiency, and this enables bass players, vocalists, keyboard players, all musicians to experience rhythm, to experience the drums on the other side of the kit. So hopefully, and with proof, we are able to create musicians who have a much greater awareness and appreciation for the spaces between the notes. Um, that's the head of the popular music program, Chris Sampson, being interviewed on KTLA Channel 5 very early one morning. Uh, but ultimately, this all has to do with music. It has to sound good, right? Okay. Now. You're hearing uh, myself on the drums and a uh, very talented young saxophone player who came to me a few years ago and he uh, said, I'd like to learn more about rhythm, more about time and tempo. And I said, okay, why don't we play a little bit and get to know each other. And as you can hear, he's a very talented musician. So I thought a good test of his time abilities would be to ask him to play a very simple melody. I could write a book, just quarter notes and half notes. Okay. But now let's listen to that same recording with the metronome that he didn't hear when I counted off the tempo for him, and that metronome or timing that he wasn't thinking about when he played the melody. One, two, I will conduct. If that seems reminiscent, it's probably like that guy that they always bring up on the Yankees game, the seventh inning, to sing God Bless America. And he always leaves out all those important spaces between the notes. Let's explore spaces between the notes. I need 10 volunteers to come up real quickly, if you don't mind. This, the entrance to the stage is over there. 10 folks, come on up. You're all familiar with this most famous of lines from Shakespeare's Hamlet. While our volunteers come up, I can tell that great theater joke. The actor in rehearsal. To be... Line? Okay. To be or not to be, that is the question. To be or not to be, that is the question. Okay, you ready? You know your lines? And action. <laughs> the question, okay. 
Now, um, number one, these people paid a lot of money for their tickets. You got to project to the uh, person in the last row. Can we try it one more time, a little louder? Very good. And action. To be or not to be. That is the question. Very good. Very good in terms of to be or not to be. And if this were beginning drumming, I might say, excellent. But now we're talking about art, right? And in music, the art comes from listening, as it should in life. And we have to listen to the rhythm of the person or the sound before us, as well as to the tone, sound, or person after us. So now, let's think, what is this saying? To be or not to be, that is the question. Heavy duty stuff, right? Let's be a little bit more theatrical. Let's be a little bit more musical with this, okay? Action. To be or not to be. That is the question. <laughs> to be or not to be. Okay, so Francis, wonderful. Martin, just give a little more of a beat before you say your line. One more time with great emotion, okay? Go. To be or not to be. That is the question. <laughs> the TEDx Thespian players, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much.